Hey folks, today I've got a little bit of a gem to talk about, and I mean a real, genuine gem. This is the HP Z820, an engineering workstation that I saved from being scrapped from a local office. This machine had been diagnosed as overheating and shutting itself off, and it's found its way into a pile of hardware that was destined to be recycled. Other than the hard drives, which are always removed when a company scraps a machine for data protection reasons, the workstation is pretty much complete. Having used a similar Z800 series HP desktop in my own work in the past, I know that these systems can actually hold some pretty tasty hardware, and after some gentle persuasion, and obviously confirmation that the hard drives had been removed and destroyed, I walked away with this diagnosed as dead unit for the grand total of zero pounds. That's right, this was free. Now even though I've used similar HP Z systems in the past, I've never actually cracked one open to see what makes it tick, so today we're going to see if we can get it running. Now I'm pretty sure you've probably seen videos on YouTube, or you've maybe even done it yourself, when you take a pre-built Dell or HP system, slot in a 1050 Ti, and you've got yourself a nice little budget gaming rig. I've done that with the Lenovo hack job, and also the £50 gaming PC challenge last year. And while it was for the most part plain sailing, there's always a few hurdles and proprietary fittings here and there that can cause little headaches. But if you think a regular pre-built is bad, well, you've not seen nothing yet. The HP Z820 is a workstation designed in conjunction with BMW, yes, that BMW, and it's based around a toolless maintenance system. Everything, and I mean everything, is proprietary here and in this instance extremely dusty, having not actually been opened in the four years of operation that it's had. Now one of the first things that I usually do is swap out the rubbish bundled PSU with something more performance orientated, but there'll be no switching up to a modular ATX PSU here, because this is the power supply. A 1.125 kilowatt 90% efficiency unit, which simply pulls out. Everything is pre-cabled managed and connected up, and the idea is that if the unit did fail, which in itself is highly unlikely, swapping over the PSU would take no more than a few seconds, meaning that a workstation could be back up and running at no time at all. If you think of it as if you had a PSU cable management hub connecting all your components, and the PSU automatically connecting to the hub when you slide it into place. It's a brilliant idea, and it's one that makes even high-end consumer PCs feel fiddly and under cable managed in comparison. Moving down to the case, we come to this cover, something that on the face of it looks simply like a nice black shroud to cover the internals just like you might see in the engine bay of any recent BMW, and that would be half right, it is a shroud, but this is actually the CPU in memory cooling fan assembly and air intake. Like the PSU, it's completely toolless, no fuss, just two handles and it will pull out. Inside we can see the proprietary power connector which engages with a port on the motherboard when it's installed, one larger fan, and a few smaller fans to cool the memory. All pretty dusty, and only on half of the assembly. Interesting. Peering into the exposed motherboard reveals why. This machine is dual socketed, meaning 8 DIMM slots per CPU, and support for up to half a terabyte, that's 512 gigabytes of RAM, depending on the CPU that's installed. In this system, only one of the sockets is populated, and with a rather beefy heat pipe and fin style heatsink, albeit one with the telltale burn marks of overheating dust, a reminder to anyone running a desktop 24-7 to take cleaning seriously. Removing the heatsink though, it's a fairly standard affair with four fittings simply clamping the heatsink down. Cleaning it up and removing the CPU from the socket shows the difference between the LGA 2011 Ivy Bridge CPUs and the standard consumer socket model. These things are big. And with good reason. The top of the line Ivy Bridge i7, the 3770K, came with 4 cores and 8 threads and a base clock of 3.5GHz, which boosts up to 3.9. This CPU is the Xeon E5 2643V2, a middle of the road 6 core 12 thread chip with a base clock of 3.5GHz and a boost of 3.8. Checking out the RAM sticks, we've got a total of 16 gigabytes in the system, 1600 speed, and it is of course error correct in memory, which is perfectly fine for domestic use. The motherboard itself is also pretty beefed up, the VRM cooling being a particular highlight, with its heat pipe and fin design being aided by one of the fans in the cooling assembly. Checking elsewhere inside, and there's a few pre-installed fans. Again, like the majority of the other components here, these are simply plug-and-play items. 
installing caddies and making connection to power and fan speed headers automatically when slotted in place. Lastly, we get down to the graphics card, and this is a Quadro K5000, which I'm sure means absolutely nothing to you, but what it is, is essentially a GK104 GPU with 4GB of memory. And if GK104 sounds familiar, that's because it's the same GPU at the heart of both the GTX 680 and GTX 770, a decent GeForce card then in Quadro guise, with 4GB of memory to boot. And now to see if we can get it working, I'm hopeful that the overheating was simply due to dried out OEM Tim and a huge amount of dust build up restricting the efficiency of the cooling assembly. So step 1 is always going to be just generally remove the dust. Ideally if you've got a data vac you could use that, but a can of compressed air will work just fine. Just be sure to do it in a well ventilated area, especially if the system is really old and really dusty. Underneath the proprietary cooling solution, it's really the same principles as any other used desktop. Remove the CPU, check everything over, clean with isopropyl and apply new thermal interface material. And it is a good job that we did this as the stock thermal compound was well past its best, being both dry and crusty and not doing anything other than being a pest to remove, even with copious amounts of isopropyl alcohol. The RAM was then removed and the contacts cleaned up, the sockets dusted out and reseated in the same order, and the CPU heatsink was blasted clean and soaked in electrical contact cleaner to remove any hard to reach grime. The Quadro K5000 was also incredibly dusty, as the tower most likely sat on the floor of the office, but it's no different than any other blower style graphics card when it comes to cleaning. A methodical deassembly, cleaning and repaste meant that it was soon looking factory fresh, which is good as these higher end Quadro cards are actually really nice to look at. I'd go as far to say that I like these Quadro cards a lot more than the GeForce Founder Edition cards. With everything cleaned up though, connections checked and components repasted, it was time to get something running on it. I've quickly hooked up a small silicon power A55 SSD and things are looking promising. Windows installs fine, no crashing, and after downloading some monitoring tools, we can see that the CPU and GPU are sitting at really respectable idle temperatures, all completely normal. Putting some more load on the components with 3D Mark Firestrike and everything at stock speeds, we completed the 3D Mark stress test with a 99.7% result. The GPU's low stock speed of 705MHz and the cleaning of the cooling assembly with a custom fan profile meant that through the whole test the GPU temperature never really reached more than the low to mid 60s. The cooling assembly for the CPU also seems to be doing its job, as the CPU temperatures never really crept up that much above idle, thanks to free flowing clean fans and the new thermal interface material. So all that it really took to revive this overheating Z820 workstation was simply a little bit of TLC, and I think that this thing has the potential now to be a really great workhorse. So the two things to take away from this video that's applicable to anyone. Firstly has to be that a clean PC is a happy one. Yes, it can be time consuming and buying large amounts of isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl wipes, new thermal paste and any new tools required to dismantle might seem like a pointless purchase on the face of it, but just like a car, it should be considered as an essential part of your routine maintenance schedule. Secondly, large companies don't value hardware as much as time, or indeed value the hardware as much as we enthusiasts do. At the end of the day, this is why this desktop was destined for the scrap heap. The system was seen as having potential to cause trouble, and if that resulted in someone losing work, it would probably cost the company a lot more than simply shelling out a few thousand pounds for a replacement workstation. And while that seems like a complete waste to us, it obviously passes the mustard in some number cruncher spreadsheet somewhere. So do yourself a favour, keep your eyes peeled and take advantage of this corporate desire for zero downtime. You could end up with something like this for less than the price of a packet of crisps. But I think we'll call it a day there. It's running and stable, but there's a lot more that can be done with this system and I'd love to know what you think we should do with it. I'm open to all suggestions at this point. As always though, a huge thanks for watching this, I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this Z820 as much as I have digging into it. Remember to like, share and subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon. And I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.